Welcome to the Brain Gain Youngstown Leadership Series podcast. Each week, we'll learn from leaders who are driving change and making an impact. Now here's your host, the CEO of the Youngstown Publishing Company, Jeff Leo Herman. Employ, enroll, or enlist. One of those three things will happen if you are a student at MCCTC. So thank you for joining us today on the podcast. I am thrilled to introduce John Zettenbauer, the superintendent of the Mahoning County Career and Technical Center. And he shares so many great insights and specifically the fact that all students are on a path to employment, enrollment, or enlisting in the military. So many great insights were shared. We had a great time. John's a great guy. I was really thrilled to hear that, you know, when you think about the instructors are so passionate about their craft and the educational experience that you can have when the instructor is so enthusiastic about their craft makes a world of difference. So please check out the podcast. And if you have any questions, by all means, let us know. Thanks for listening. I have to say, this is the coolest place ever to record a podcast. That is awesome. So, John, thanks for having us today on the Brain Gain Podcast. We are here at MCCTC in the aviation section, right? What what do you technically call this? Um, Aviation Maintenance Technology Program, or Aircraft Mechanics Program, as it was for many years. So, you know, how we start off all these interviews is... It's interesting to speak to you because you work with kids every single day. And so you can see them grow and develop and really kind of the sparks that ignite them. So as a child, did you think you'd be here right now? Um, no, not at all, not uh, 100%. No, I thought I'd be somewhere working and I, I really truly thought I'd be a mechanic somewhere. That's what my father was and that's what most of my family was. We grew up as a, had, had a farm machinery dealership in Columbiana County. And, oh, wow. And so I started working at the young age of five years old and helping my parents with their business. And, right. and what did you learn from that experience? Um, it, it, I'm a big skill person, and I know skills have come and went um, historically. Um, talked about the importance of skills forever. I've always believed in them. There was a period of time where college became um, the thing to do, and, and skills kind of took a back seat. But those skills that I learned as a child, whether it was how to change a tire, whether it was all my tools or whatever it was, have, have helped me throughout and obviously here at the Career Center. So maintenance and repair and, and just building things hands-on. Yep. When did your love of aviation happen? Well, it, ironically, it didn't happen till I, I graduated from high school. Oh, like wow. many, I, and, and I'm not embarrassed to say that I started out at a university in the, in the early 80s and, and didn't have a great successful experience. Mm-hmm. Um, my parents wanted more and expected the college education. And I went to a school called Pittsburgh Institute of Aeronautics and right. truly fell in love with with that and working on airplanes. And it's a lot cleaner than working on, to tell you the truth, I'm a nurse spreader in, the, in my parents' uh, business. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, but it, no, no. it was. Well, so repairing the nurse spreaders? Yeah. And, I mean, because they and, get jammed up. Well, as, a, right? as <laughs> the youngest of four brothers, I got the most of the job of, of cleaning up equipment and cleaning it before my older brothers could, could work on it. Right, That's just right. part of life, so. That's just the way it is. But then I got to work on them, obviously, so. Right, well, what, so it was a family business all, yes. four brothers? Yep. Uh, or four, four of us. Kids. I'm the youngest of four. There was five of us. I have a younger sister, and there was three older brothers, and, and I'm the youngest of four brothers. So, And we all grew up uh, working in the family business and eventually, you know, helping out on the family farm, you know, that my dad purchased later. Wow. So work ethic out of the gate. Yep. Absolutely. Long hours, and, and, but, but always enjoyed it. A love for work. Truly right. a love for work. Right. Now, did that, did you, you know, working, so I work, grew up in a warehouse unloading potato chip trucks. And I always thought that was my motivation to go to college. Mm-hmm. Did this, did you think, was this experience something like, okay, I gotta, you know, I'm gonna pursue this career. Like what, what did that experience give you as a younger person? Obviously the work, the work ethic, I, I enjoyed, my brothers would say I would the worst of the four mechanics, but, oh, okay. but and so um, I did love working on, on stuff and I ended up really enjoy working on on aircraft, and I think that that love for just working, but 
as I went to United Airlines, I, I kind of found out that the harder you work, that people look at you and start saying, if you're a good mechanic, you know, you should do something else. And as a young person, I ended up in training at United Airlines in San Francisco, um, quasi-management position at a young age, and, and uh, I really enjoyed that stuff. And actually, that teaching, that early teaching, kind of always was in the back of my mind as I transferred out when this job came about as teaching in a uh, it, it was it was pretty easy for me decision for me to make. Were there people you looked up to as a child? So it sounds like you had a very tight family unit and older brothers to kind of keep you straight, right? Just yeah, keep you focused. I, I, I looked up to my brothers. Obviously, my, yeah. both my parents worked uh, uh, long hours. We worked at the business, so my brothers raised me a little bit, and yeah. uh, so that was always interesting. But I looked up to them as as how they led and what they did. They're all successful business people now. Um, right. They all own their own businesses, so it's ironically that we ironic that we started and we all ended up on that other end of uh, in that right. fashion. Was there so in in you know aviation? Were there that that was the '80s, right? So yep. <laughs> that was a time. So you were working at United in San Francisco, which is one of their hubs. Yeah. Right? So uh, I graduated high school in '83. I know that probably don't want to ask me how old I well, am, but that, yeah. that's that's we'll fair that. question to put the timing together. Um, in, in the late '80s, uh, '88 is when I ended up at United Airlines in San Francisco. A aviation was booming then. Right. They had hired United Airlines had hired 3,000 mechanics in a in a year. Wow. time and so you know that that economic boost to that area and moved to move my young family to San Francisco and so that was a learning experience San Francisco obviously one of the most expensive places in yes the US. yes it, it was and I looked at the wages and thought this is a great opportunity for my young family so I packed up and moved out of there but out there but very very expensive lived in a very small apartment and uh, but but loved the work um, l learned a different culture, learned a different uh, than what Hanoverton, Ohio was, yeah. that's for sure. Did family bring you back, kind of the notion um, of family? Yes, yeah, so, uh, you know, always wanted back. I, I have my roots in the valley here and, you know, in Columbiana County. I've al always liked having property and land and being able to expand in that, in that life. And it, was, it would have been very difficult out in uh, San Francisco to find that. But Yeah, you'd have to move way out. <laughs> yes, and there was people that actually drove two hours a day in and out of work, took buses in and out of work to live out in the country. Wow. Um, but I wasn't at that point. Did, would you say you're, everything, all the hard work and the work ethic and the family and just this whole training and development, was, has that been an influence on your leadership style today? So Yes, I think. And, and I always respected the leaders that I had some great, uh, very fortunate leaders. And um, I know we always talk about leadership, and, and at that time, I always looked at the leaders as the people I directly worked for. And I've worked for so many bosses, both good and bad, and I, I've watched the ones that were successful, that treated their employees well, and, and did those things, and were very successful future down the road, so. Okay. So tell us about where we're sitting right now, because this is, like I said, this is super cool. Like, I can't believe we're sitting in the aviation maintenance. Yeah, this is program, a, so. a, for those that, that has, is an FAA, Federal Aviation Administration, 147 a and school. It's a full uh, airframe and power plant mechanic school that you can get you one of only four in the state of Ohio, and one of the very few single instructor programs in the state, in the, actually in the nation, there's only a handful um, of them that operate like this. And we, we offer the same opportunity that you see at this associate degree level. And uh, we fortunate to have a great instructor here now that has taken over the reins after several years and has, has kept the program going. Because you've, you've started here in, in the aviation, right? With yes. MCCTC? I started here in 1990, roughly, and, and was the aviation instructor for 10 years. Wow. And so what, what's, when you have, uh, do you feel like that's a career that has a lot of potential? Um, absolutely. There's, uh, it, even in a downturn in the economy, um, as you've seen even, even now, um, there is still a need. There was a big shortage of aircraft mechanics and a shortage of everything, plumbers and welders and, and all that. Um, but the, the aircraft mechanics trade has been a very good trade. It's treated me very well through my career early on. Um, we have many graduates. Um, some of the hardest things is for, for a student coming out of high school is re relocating. It's not yeah. the fact that there's a job, but you know, uh, if you're going to go to United Airlines or yeah. US Air or um, 
one of the many airlines that are out there, um, sometimes you're moving, but high wage jobs, many fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year, right out of a high school program. Out of, out of a what high a, school. Oh yes, absolutely. And so it's it's just tremendous uh, opportunity. Now, so do you? Is your do you do leadership by checklist? <laughs> so <laughs> I can, you know, ironically, <laughs> it, 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 you know this. Uh, I, I I know the, this the leadership talk, and I yeah. don't consider myself a, a leader. Ironically, I am. Right. But, but yeah. typically. Absolutely. I'm a right, left, north, south person. So it was very much a checklist. And that was kind of the running joke early on in my career that, you know, basically, hey, the state says we got to get credentials. The state says this. Every kid's got to get a credentials. And I measured my success by the number of kids getting credentials, the number of graduates. It was very mechanical. I still do. Right. It's, I still believe in that. That's the. Um, but I, I think I've shifted a little bit to realize that unless you focus on your employees and, and give them the leadership and give them the power um, to do that. You know, I'm a big fan of Simon Sinek, right, um, right. which probably a lot of America is. I, right. I get that. I don't want to jump on that bandwagon. What's you have the golden circle? Is that what um, it's called? Uh, eaters, lead, uh, leaders eat oh, last. Oh, yeah, leaders eat last, you know, right. And he's, got, he's got a variety of books, um, but, but he, he, he talks about just creating and empowering your people um, right. and empowering them to, to make those decisions. And it took me a while early on to think back because when I was in San Francisco, I realized that, wow, I had to go back to what made me successful. I'm like, what made me grow the most was those, those and some of these weren't even weren't college educated. They were just people right. that just said, hey, John, do this. You know, do this. We want you to do this. And I was like, I can't do that. Jeez, oh, man, that's you're asking me to work on a hundred million dollar airplane and do this and by myself. And they're like, you can do it. Get out there and do it. I'm not going to help you. It was a little different, but that's that's what we try to instill in our folks here and and from my supervisors and principals to directors down all the way down to our. So when you, you see kids and kids with, say, a lot of potential, how, how do you you know, you, the fact that you can literally come here and graduate from high school out of the gate and start to, you know, earn a nice wage, have, you know, set up with a nice lifestyle living. What, how do you speak to them? Because, you know, there are situations where there's always been this bias, you know, oh, you have to go to college. And it just kind of was rote, right? Yeah. You know, how do you kind of get into that conversation? I think you, you have to um, sell you, it, and I don't mean sell your product. A lot of people market and sell their product. Yeah. We sell people because if you create what they do and those students go out, their success sells right. that. Right. You know, there's nothing you can say that that success is so powerful, you know, to other kids. That word of mouth. If you talk to our marketing folks, they'll say, what's the biggest number one things that market is, is word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Is somebody saying this is the best place I've ever been. Right. What, I mean, so speaking of that, like if, if your marketing folks were here, wink, wink. <laughs> See, we break the fourth wall a lot. So I'll the, be talking to Steve here momentarily. <laughs> so, Steve, leave this in, obviously. Yeah, right. That's it. <laughs> I don't have that's to tell it. him anymore. But uh, no, what would you say? So if, I, if I'm a parent and I'm, you know, and, and I'm looking at my child and I'm thinking about there's so many career potential opportunities, I think we're much more open minded yep. to the potential and especially and look, if you go to college, um, it's great, but you're, you're logging four years, you're taking classes that may or may not be relevant to you. You know, what do you say to kids when they're coming in here, but they're just kind of unsure? I had, I'm, I'm not anti-college, believe me. We promote a lot of our students to go on to school. I'm a college graduate. Oh, yeah. I understand yeah. how it promoted me through, but I, I'm also a mechanic first. When people say, oh, what do you do? Right. I, I'm a mechanic first, and then I, but if you give... I honestly believe, going back to the checklist you talked yeah. about, if you say, here's the facts, here's the true facts, you know, if you come here, whatever program you're in, you do what we ask you to do, here's what, I, I can almost give them a personal guarantee that says this is what it's going to happen. Right. Because it's two plus two equals four. Right. It, right. And I, I sound like, you know, and a lot of universities can't do that. And, and not right. that I'm, once again, but right. if you pick the right degree, in a university 100% and you're passionate about it. Yeah, you right. Know? But once again, that student has to have a passion here, has right. to say, listen, this is what I wanna do. And those kids that match their passion with the skills that we offer them are just knocking it out of the park, so. Right, because they and literally- I sound like a salesman, I don't no, mean No, 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 I, I think it's important because they, they, you literally get degree certifications, yeah. right? I mean, you come out with a 
hard skill, and I think that's what's important. And it, it's everywhere, right? From anything, if you want to work at Google, there's Google Analytics certifications. You know, they look, every company these days is looking for a degree of certification that you actually have a skill first, you know, and no, you know, I have a, well, I don't want to get into my biases, but you know, liberal arts degrees, right? They're great, it gets your mind to expand. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> and if that's your passion, so, yeah. then, then go then for you it. And end up in a sales job, which is great because I love sales. So, yeah. but, so I think it's just interesting to, that the students coming here literally leave with some tangible outcome, right? Somewhere at least to get started. And that's, and once again, my passion is, is you got to have something in your hand, whether it's a certificate or a license or that checking the box a little bit, because we make sure we check the box when you leave here. You're not leaving here with just a, hey, I came to the Career Center and hung out for two years with my friends, which is still, we offer a lot of that, uh, that stuff, which is good. You find kids that made lifelong friends. But at the end of the day, our workforce out there dictates to me, I got a great workforce uh, um, advisory committee that, that I talk to, I've made friends, and this is what I love about this job. I get to meet great people like right. you, Jeff, obviously, yeah. and, and all the other people that are tied to business industry, and I find it very interesting. And I love every aspect of from manufacturing, not just aviation, to to welding, to, to even cosmetology. I'm amazed by all the different careers and how passionate, and we match that up. You know, you are, I was here at a tour last February. It was amazing, it was packed, mm -hmm. it was pre-pandemic. So it was great to see the energy and the enthusiasm, and like you said, the success story. So people on stage literally saying what this you know, educational center has done for their career. So if you were a parent, and I, you know, I have two kids, they're you know, middle school, one's in ninth grade, who seem to be not quite sure what they're passionate about, do you have a way to help them discover their passions? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, it's, it's ironic you bring that up because probably two, three years ago, through some advice of our, our marketing department and, and our director and the principals and discussions with our advisory committees that's saying, listen, how do we get kids engaged in these great careers? You're doing a great thing. You're, and somebody would say, you're the best kept secret out there. Right. And being humble, you're always like, oh, okay, that's, I'm all right, we're just doing the right thing. Right. But we need to enlighten our parents and enlighten students to help them find that passion. And I'm not saying this is the passion for everybody, but we have summer camps at fourth, fifth, sixth grade that we were doing that kids can come out and get a little exposure. These one week camps were hugely successful. We, they morphed into visitations beyond that, um, which, which really, I will tell you, I would encourage any parent to call, pick up the phone. I don't care if your kid's in third grade, sixth grade, fifth grade, um, eighth grade, 10th grade, come out and visit us. Right. You know, because there are students that come around and go, wow, I didn't know that existed. Right. And and to help our parents and help guide them, there's no high pressure sales. Right. I, I will tell you 100 percent. We we come out. I've given tours. Um, Jessica gives tours. You know, Mara gives tours. Every one of our staff member gets tours and you can walk in any one of our labs and they'll talk about their program and what it means. And the one thing about it is it may not mean anything to that student. They'll say, ah, yeah, I don't want that, which is a great. That's thing. also good to know. Finding out what you don't want to do. Right. We've had students that have went through here, been very successful and go, you know, I, I don't want to do that. Not very many, but they're like, but what it did is it morphed them into a different career. Right. John Z. You know, I was an aircraft mechanic. I don't work on airplanes anymore. Yeah. But what this did, it helped me understand business and industry and the airline and that background is the same across the board. So getting kids and young adults, and even after they graduate, our adult programming, you know, to come out and visit and to look at that thing, um, and our partnerships with YSU and Eastern Gateway, we're one big collaborative family. So I will tell you, when you come out here, you're gonna hear us talk about a hundred different options. Right, right. And that's, I think that's important. You mentioned maybe you don't want to do something and, and with, you know, our audience with children, they get frustrated. Oh, my kid's not, they just want to play Fortnite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sit on the Xbox. Hey, that's even an option, right? Yeah. Game to film. got computer and gaming <laughs> programs and, right. and those can lead into good careers also. Right, right. So just d helping them discover what they don't like also is just as important that's as just what as they, important. they might like you know? as well. Like eating ice cream. Sometimes you try a different flavor ice cream, you may yeah, not like yeah. it, you just don't go back to that. But you know, you may find something you like more. Even so it's very hands-on as well. And and I think that's one of the one of the trends we're seeing 
from our career, our, our, what the available jobs here in, in our region, very hands-on, skilled labor, be it technically skilled or me, you know, mechanically skilled. Yep. But for example, at the Canfield Fair, uh, which we didn't have this past yeah. year, but it, you had the trailer and I sat my son down at the, he, there was a simulator, like a flying simulator. He was like, ah, I don't wanna do that. You know, he just yeah. wasn't interested. Then he sat down and did it and he was like, now we have a drone. Oh, <laughs> there so you go. We got a Net Mavic Mini and we're flying, we're taking shots and we're gonna do some stuff this weekend that's probably top secret, but. <laughs> But it's under 2.250 grams, so I'm clear. You're right? good. You're okay. Good, as long as you follow the rules, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. So we won't be breaking any laws. But um, but I talked about the summer camps. But beyond that, I you know, I'm glad you brought that up with the Canfield Fair. We spent a week out there for a parent that wants to. Unfortunately, we didn't have the fair this year, but we're super excited about We've got a trailer that we'll bring to any school or any organization. And, and that's nice to know. Oh, if yeah. you've got an organization, a 4-H club or something that says, listen, we want to do some uh, career development. We want, we want kids to see the options that are out there. It's awesome. Right. I mean, it's just right. good stuff. I think I, we even laser printed a um, coaster. Yeah. A probably. Ohio State coaster. They say so far, my instructors come up, and once again, that leadership that they create, that they have the ability to offer all that stuff, they say, somebody will bring me up something, go, oh, look what your instructors did. And I'll be like, wow, that... That's awesome. Yeah. And I'm so proud of them. I'm like, you know, you didn't know that. I'm like, I'm telling you, every day there's somebody doing something creative. In and so a lot of this depends on the instructor. So the, what your leadership environment is such that you let the instructors, do you have a template they follow or do you let you them know, kind of express it themselves? Yeah, I got a check, you know. The checklist, yeah. <laughs> you know, I still have a, a you know, a set of a, a bowling alley, you know, staying between the lanes. You've right. got to do this. There's some non-negotiables. But beyond those non-negotiables, how you get there, how you get uh, to yeah. there is how you get there. Right. And 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 there they what I've realized is they take their passion, you know. Imagine learning this. Not everybody thinks like me. Right. <laughs> you know right. that that was one of the early lessons. But and and so every kid learns different, and so they got to find a way to reach them. So, so that's interesting. I'm thinking about an educational environment where the instructor is truly passionate about aircraft maintenance or truly passionate about welding because they they love it they've done it so i would think that educational environment passing information to a student would be much more compelling so john i want to then get into the academic credentials associated with these programs what how we round out the students but first we're going to take a minute to thank our sponsors The Brain Gain is a collaborative effort, and we'd like to thank the headlining members of the coalition, including Farmers National Bank, Sweeney Chevrolet Buick GMC, and the Mahoning Valley Manufacturers Coalition. Also included are Eastern Gateway Community College, PNC Bank, the Youngstown Business Incubator, Youngstown State University, the DeBartolo Corporation, Simon Roofing, and the Mahoning County Career and Technical Center. Okay, John, we're back. Still uh, on the break. I, t I jumped in the helicopter. It was pretty cool. <laughs> so, but tell me about the academic program. So how, if a student comes here, say, for avi aviation maintenance technology, do they still take English classes or math classes? Yep. Or how does that work? They still take their math, English, science, and social studies, their core class, along with some electives. But a little bit different, several years ago, we started the academy approach, which we broke into groups uh, and, I, and I'll just roughly transportation, manufacturing, and the different groups. But within them, we assign career uh, academic teachers, the, your uh, normal math teacher, science, social studies teacher, specifically to that group. And so they've changed their curriculum, still following the state standards, but every one of those state standards is tied to the career tech standards. They mesh and guide them. So if you're looking at say an engine here yeah and you're looking at uh, cubic displacement on that engine that math teacher now will say what a great uh, hands-on yeah. this is awesome let's pull one of these cylinders off now the math teacher that's been classically trained is now picking up skills and they're going let's take a mic and let's mic this and oh my gosh this is practical this is truly practical math very hands-on very applied so instead of theoretical right like I, my son asked me the other day, why do I need to learn um, proportions? 
I said, <laughs> every, it's all about scale, it's about proportion. So the math classes then can be basically mapped into the fact that how it applies to, say, in this case, and, aviation. And, and I could give you hundreds of examples, but, you know, fuels, for instance, if you look here, you know, you've got, we've got turbine engines that have jet fuel. We've got regular gas fuel. We've got, and each one of them's a synthetically different compound chemically right. than in every other fuel. Your oils that you put in your car every day, that, that type of oil um, creates a separation between mechanical parts. All that's a chemical composition that is, that is a field of dreams for a science teacher right. to give them practical application of understanding. All right, so once again, it gets back to this notion of the, the level of enthusiasm or passion you have for a topic, and then the general studies can be directly applied, you know, the general yeah. courses of study, you know, like math can be then directly applied to this skill. And you'll see the math teacher in here teaching math in here. You know, you'll see the science, you know, and that's what's really, I find really, that's been a big leadership change probably in the last five years. And, and or eight years, I would say, that really was able through to get those teachers into the classroom. We've always talked about it, but it's always been like, let's try, but they've always been separated. Now they're truly integrated into the classroom. So then you have a lot of instructors that collaborate and, and literally just say, hey, come on, can I come in for the oh, day? Oh, 100%. And actually, we push that and encourage that. And actually, a little bit hesitant, just like if you wanted to say, John, go teach a math class or a, a yeah. science class. And, you know, previously, early, you know, when I was teaching, I taught my own math. I taught my own aviation math. I taught my own aviation science. I didn't reach out to the academic teacher because that was kind of their field. That's no longer those walls aren't here in a career tech setting, which is really a different... Um, which is a different thought process, but much better learning. The kids can pick it up. You mm -hmm. know, it's other ways to learn. Right. So then how do kids say, do you, what's the process to guide kids? Say they're here at their, their time at MCCTC. Do you help them along to discover their next option? So some straight into a company, some to a four-year degree. Some, like what's, what's that guidance process Good question. Here? Employ, enroll, or enlist. The three E's that Career Tech talks. Oh, wait, what's that? Employ, enroll, enroll or enlist. enlist. That is, at the end of the day, my checklist. Yeah. It, it's funny because everybody says, what are you going to do? And this time of year, we got our seniors, and I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. They're like, well, I don't know. Nope. I don't know. Right. The placement is not sitting on your parents' couch and going home. The placement you're going to employ, you're going to enroll or enlist. You're going to enlist in the military, you're going to enroll in college, or you're going to go directly to employment. And the, one of those three, and it really makes them, if it, that's keeping them in the box, say one of those three. Yeah, it, right. Right. They're oh, right. all three great choices, and if you don't know, we have great relationships with all three of those entities that do that. Right, so the employee part, so do you have organizations, like I know Sweeney you have a, a relationship yep. with, mm -hmm. you know, talk about auto repair, you know, it's, it's turning into an IT job, right? Yeah, and, and so much electronics involved in everything now, everything's got a wire hook to it, but um, we've got advisory committees. Every one of our career tech programs has to have an adv active advisory committee, which is um, you have to have people from business and industry serve directly on that committee to help advise. And unlike, it's not, it's not just chatter, it's not just, hey, it's nice to have them, let's call them in. It is truly, uh, my expectations in, in, as the administration and a leadership standpoint is you listen to those people. And it's hard sometimes, but when you do, the pace, they hire your students and, and all of yeah. a sudden we're getting equipment, as you know, we're, you know, we're, we're, <laughs> we, we've been very fortunate um, to get a lot of donations from our advisory committee members and, and even support from a statewide standpoint. I know Governor DeWine was here last year, and some of the students got to speak around their passions and what their success is. Yeah, we're very fortunate. We're one of the, you know, a career center, getting the whole governor's cabinet, not just the governor. You're right, yeah. We got the whole cabinet. Love seeing the governor. I, I, I enjoy talking to him. But those people that run his departments, very powerful, able to provide funds and, and money. And when they see things and how uh, the good things that are going on, we got, as you know, we got the $400,000 for our fire tower classroom to finish that. We got the previous grant. We're getting a robotics welder um, through another grant. We're getting a co another co-robot, a soft robot, as they sometimes called. So there's, and I would say around every program, there is something coming in, which is awesome.
That's fantastic. Good stuff. You know, we, we haven't gotten into the notion of leadership mistakes. So I know when, you, you know, you mentioned the bowling lanes and I, I agree, right? Set the, you know, here's the gutter, stay out of the gutter, but just <laughs> yeah. kind of find your way down the lane. Have you made leadership mistakes over time that you care to No, share? of course not. No, nothing, <laughs> right? I, well, when you're working on airplanes, you can't make mistakes. <laughs> Actually, it's ironic. And I, I, I've thought about this. I'm constantly, I'm probably uh, overly critically in my m critical in my mind, but yes, I have. I am not ashamed to say them. I own them, and and I try to learn from them. I try not to make them again. <laughs> right. Um, but uh, I, I could I can go down through and 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 look back. We do a ton of con construction here. You know, as you know, 2007 we had a huge fire. Right. Um, that was a huge learning experience for me. There was things I'd like to go back. If you look around here, we were able to build things. And for instance, you build a new restaurant. It's beautiful. Um, I, people see, wow, this is a restaurant. I'm like, gosh, if I had to do over again, I'd have bought this piece of equipment. I'd have moved this wall here. And so those are the mechanical checklist things. Right. Um, you know, I think uh, obviously professionally, um, as you look at uh, the mistakes you make along the line, I won't go into detail, but I think those mold you. And Learning I think if you can look at those yeah. and those are opportunities, and I always tell people, what are you going to do next? Right. Like, what's your next move? Yeah, because right. everybody has those, oh, I can't believe that happened. And there's been some tough things. And the hardest ones are, is when you make a decision about a student, you're sometimes 50, it's 51, 49% of you're making this decision and and you got to make the decision you stand by it you move forward and 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 if it's wrong then you try to fix it as much as you can and and move forward right. and learn right well yeah, right what's next i mean that's life what's next right? next play right they talk about yeah. in sports all the time yeah. next play i fumbled yeah. what are you going to do next play if you're Hopefully pitching you, don't fumble again. you throw in balls the next one could be a strike you know right. Just, and and i think being able to overcome that and the support of the people below you that They'll pick up, and a lot of times the mistakes I've made, I'm like, ooh, and somebody's caught that or sees it coming. Right. Um, right. And, and that's good. Do you feel like you have great support from what I'll call the community at large? So you have employers, you have the county. You know, how, yeah. how, do you, how does that feel from a... They got a great relationship. Uh, you know, we got Canfield Police and Fire, great partners. They're on my advisory committee. So locally there is. I've got great support from our regional, you know, reps both both sides of the table had great relationship with them because the one thing i feel like i'm we're blessed because in career tech who's going to argue with workforce development there's there's no it, it's a great place to be right you may argue with with the thought but everybody wants you know students to be successful everybody wants business and industry to be successful so i feel like you know that's good and so our representatives all the way up through the state and even at the, even at the federal level you know we got the attention and not this isn't me by any means but the, what these teachers do you know politically you know we got all the way up to the president's office and saying listen you career tech's doing good things right and i will tell you even 10 years ago in the previous administration we got the, we got attention from them saying, "Wow, this is good. You're doing good stuff." So, is there anything in, in our way? So any so if you had to speak regionally, you you know there's momentum, right? So there's mm -hmm. really good momentum. We have great projects happening, you know, across our entire region, Northeast Ohio and Western Pennsylvania. Is there anything you, if only I wish, if you could wave a magic wand, something you might change? Um, I think the expansion. There's some funding issues that exist for career tech and education in general across the board. Right. We're still in that box of every student is worth X amount of dollars. And so, and I'll just say it the way it is. Truly, I, if you're a Boardman student, it's important for that, you know, that's a number. If you're a career center, it's important for us because that pays the bills. It keeps the lights on. And that's, a, that's above, that's a governmental, that's a yeah. Department of Education thing. They've been trying to work on it for years. I can't tell you what that answer is. I just know that that's a barrier for every kid to end up doing what they need to do. It's, it limits mobility. Right. So it doesn't, it's not as fluid as one would like it, right? So we're, with students, it, it, there's an incentive for certain educational institutions to retain their students. And even right? at the university level, it's yeah. tough. Everybody's, everybody's competing. Um, and and I, I, I always show that heavy sigh but it's truly, if you look at the Eastern Gateways and YSU, we are very good partners. We right. overcame that. Right. But I will tell you the mistake I made 10, eight years ago, 
boy, let's go out and get as many and let's not share our secrets. And if you want to be quite honest, we share our secrets. There's nothing that doesn't come out on the table. We're, we're you know, Jeff, you and I are friends and we know that same group of folks. Yeah, yeah. We're all on that same table. Right. And, and all I say is I always want to be at the table. Right. Whether it's, this is not your turn, John, this is not something. Hey, it's about the bigger whole. And if people can look at it as this is important for the Valley, for the state of Ohio, I'm a, I like to win. I think that's a win for everybody. If they're winning, everybody's winning. I, I agree. I, I feel like there is a newfound, and it's refreshing where so many people are willing to collaborate and you don't see a lot of hidden political agendas. I guess if they're hidden, you can't see them. I don't know. But you don't, you don't, you don't sense <laughs> yeah. hidden political agendas. I really feel like everyone is in it together and they collaborate together. And yeah, sometimes you're in the driver's seat, sometimes you're in the back seat, and then you move to the driver's seat. It just, it just, there's a great spirit of collaboration from middle school through college and then into career. And so all the organizations as well. So all the companies are behind it. And there's, you know, I, I used to go down this route of, um, successful companies hid their success because they wanted to fly below the radar and I don't want anyone to know I'm loaded yeah. and I have a Ferrari <laughs> in my garage and I'm not going to let anyone see it. Um, yeah, that's just more of a cultural thing around here, right? You don't want to flaunt your success. But yeah. I feel like the, the private companies were private to a fault, but now that seems to be more, you know, they're just open, open book and like, hey, what do you want to know? I'm not hiding anything. Want to see everyone succeed. The ecosystem improves from it. Yeah, but that, that ecosystem, and I think, and, and that's what these conversations like this are great to get out there because I love that ecosystem, as you, as you call it. And I think you coined a couple terms in there, the business journal did, and I really like that, that um, we can all collaborate Right. And we can all kind of open, and even the businesses through the MBMC and, and all those that have brought people to the table right. um, and for the common good. Right. We, yeah, we, I didn't get to work the hashtags in, you know, Voltage Valley. Should I just say that just yeah. to have it on the record? Yeah. <laughs> Voltage Valley. And, I, and I, re, I read them, and I can't tell you off the top of my head, yeah. but, but, but I do like them. Every time I see one, I'm like, ah, that's good. Yeah. That's nice. Well, that part of our whole, part of this region and a track retaining our kids and then attracting new ones is showing there's just uh, so much potential here and we have uh, you know the unlimited potential for success so I guess to wrap up um, do you have a challenge you want to offer to the audience so something you want to say you know what it could be as simple as give us a look bring yep. your bring your kid out take a tour or I will tell you that I'm glad you asked that because it's very simple wherever your kid your adult whoever you are it's never too old to learn, it's never too young to start, right. and get out there, come visit us, get a tour, call me up personally, call Jessica, call, you know, pick up that phone and talk to somebody. We'll take time out Saturday, Sunday, kind of 24 seven, we'll get you. And if it's just like, I wanna see what's more, I, I wanna see what's out there, cause I'm curious. Um, whether you're being retrained as an adult, whether you're looking at the STEM school, whether you've got a seventh or eighth grader, it says, listen, what's out there as far as STEM goes, mm -hmm. what's out there at nine and 10, so uh, that's the plea. At the end of the day, just look. And if it's not for you, it's not for you. You, you can scratch it off your yeah, list. Yeah, you know, but you, you know, right. you checked it out. You gave it, gave it a shot. And if it could work or not work, but no matter what, you know. Yep, exactly. And call up. Actually, I love the fact that people are starting to talk to their, their the companies in the business and industry and saying, hey, what are you about? Get out to that local business, say you want to visit, find out what that career is about. That's where you're going to end up. Right, right. Well, John, thanks for your time today. Thank you. It's been super cool sitting yeah, here. Absolutely, Jeff. In the uh, Aviation Maintenance Technology Center. Is that where you are? Once yes, and I, I don't want to say it's my favorite program, everybody, but I was an aircraft mechanic. Yeah. So I got to yeah. be a little. Absolutely. No, I mean, <laughs> this is so It's unique. not, they're all my favorite. I mean, it's just come out here to get, take a tour alone just to see the cool stuff out here. So, yep, absolutely. All right, thanks, John. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. We really do appreciate your time. If you like what you hear, please share it with a friend. And also, please leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast player. Those really do help us improve the quality of the show. If you have questions, comments, concerns, ideas, guests you want to recommend, hit me up on LinkedIn or send me an email at j-h-e-r-r-m-a-n-n -N at business-journal.com. I will certainly get back to you. And I do have to thank 
Once again, the members of our Brain Gain Coalition. Without them, none of this would be possible. So thank you to Farmers National Bank, Sweeney Chevrolet Buick GMC, the Mahoney Valley Manufacturers Coalition for all of their support. And, and along with them, additional members of the coalition include Eastern Gateway Community College, PNC Bank, the Youngstown Business Incubator, MCCTC, Mahoney County Career and Technical Center, the great team out there, Simon Roofing, the DeBartolo Corporation, and Youngstown State University. So thanks so much once again, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell for notifications. And also make sure to connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. For all of your business news, visit businessjournaldaily.com. For all of your arts and entertainment news, go to afterhoursyoungstown.com.